Hello, this is a video I'm doing on Manjaro Linux, and I've done one before, I believe, but this is what I would like to show you how I do things on a fresh install. This is just off the top of my head right now, and this is what I generally do for most Linux distributions after installing them. The first is I look at the taskbar, and I am not a fan of the Windows 7 you know, taskbar view where they're collapsed like this. Most people probably like this, and that's cool but I like to tinker around to get it to be the classic view where they're the wider buttons that show the title of the window. So let's go to configure icons only taskbar. I have to click through here because I'm not very familiar with KDE as of late. So I, it takes me a few tries to kind of mess around with this. Here we go. Let's go to, and we're in this taskbar edit mode. Let's go to show alternatives. Here we are. Window list, I believe. Let's try that. No, that's not the one I want. Let's go back to edit mode and we'll go to um, enter edit mode. Oops. This is unedited as you can see. Add widgets. How do you right click here? Show alternatives. There it is. So you can just kind of click around on these widgets. Let's see if I can find a window that's open. Where's the alternative? Enter edit mode. I gotta get back there again. <laughs> show alternatives for pager. No, margin separator, application launcher, window list. There it is, show alternatives. Okay, back here. So let's go to task manager. I think that's the one we want. There we go. So it confuses me the naming uh, convention of it, I guess, but it's there. So now I got it perfectly how I want it. And you can see the only thing I've really done is installed simple screen recorder because this is what I use to record this video. And I did that through the little app store that comes with Manjaro. Okay, next. Let's look at, you know, things that are different. Because there's a lot of things that are different in Plasma that are not in other desktops, I would say. And me, this is from me not being very familiar with Plasma, KDE Plasma, that this version of Manjaro is based on. So if you look down here, you see things like Manjaro Settings Manager. That's something specific to Manjaro. And it will alert you on things such as new kernel updates. And I like that. I think it's kind of cool. It's kind of like, a, you know, maybe Linux Mint has its own little alerts down there once in a while. Like there's language pack, up, pack updates and stuff like that. If you right click on this, though, uh, there's, yep, language packages. Okay, cool. So it, in kernels, <laughs> there we go. So it's very specific. And it does alert you. I did get an alert on the kernel. That's how I knew that. Because right when I logged in, first thing here, after I updated, it said there's a kernel update available. So what I would recommend before doing that is backing up your system. So let's do that first. And we're gonna look for an app called TimeShift. Is This is my favorite local backup app. And I wouldn't consider it a backup, I'd call it a uh, settings. Um, I would call it more of a, uh, like a time machine, you know, kind of solution. Not where your backup is going somewhere off site where it's safe. So I would consider this to be something just to fix some settings that you may have broke and you want to fix later. So let's go to the add or move software right here under all applications. And we're going to search for time shift because I don't believe it comes in with this by default. And there it is. We're going to install this first one. And we're going to go to apply. Uh oh, it couldn't satisfy dependency. That's not good. Let's see what it, what did it say? Removing timeshift breaks dependency, timeshift required by timeshift auto snap. Do I have it installed? Let's see. I must have already installed it. Um, I don't recall installing it, but maybe I did yesterday. Just if you have Manjaro, just see if you included it, if it's included already. I don't recall installing it. Maybe it already came with this and they're a step ahead of me. <laughs> um, if not, just go ahead and install it. So let's go look under system and there's time shift. Oh, great. So I don't have to do this. This is perfect. Um, we're going to install it and we keep our sync selected as the default. We go to next and it's just going to calculate and give you options for how often you want to back up. So this is the drive that I'm using. I'm on a dual boot windows machine and I'm going to click next. I like to do uh, weekly. So I'm going to uncheck daily and I like to keep three backups. So I click next and then I click finish and that's it. It's scheduled. It's going to happen now. Now, what I would recommend is doing a backup right on the spot. Actually, if you're about to update your kernel, I'm not going to do that because I'm recording 
video right now and I don't want to affect how this is recording. So we got that out of the way. Backups are set up. Another thing I'd like to install, this is personal preference, is caffeine. And caffeine is amazing. Not just the drink or the drug, um, but or the stimulant, whatever you call it. Uh, but this caffeine next generation, I love to install. And what this does is it presses an invisible key, if you will, on your keyboard every 60 seconds or so. And what that does is it keeps your screen awake. And it truly keeps your screen awake. You know, sometimes I just don't trust, you know, a window playing a video to keep my screen open. Maybe I want to keep music playing. Maybe I want something to just keep the screen on so it doesn't stop. And caffeine's always done that really well. So now that it's installed, I go over here, click the, the start button, if you will, or the Manjaro button, and I just start typing caffeine, C-A-F-F. -F, and there it is, caffeine next generation. And if you look down here on the taskbar area, you'll see a little cup of coffee. You click it. You click enable caffeine and now my screen will not go asleep as long as that is lit even if the laptop's on battery mode it will not stop it from staying awake so this is a great solution if you need your computer to stay on maybe you're rendering a video maybe you're um, you know uploading something that's really important it's gonna take two days this will keep it going you got to have this app trust me it's great uh, so time sync that's something else I like to think about I already did this on mine. You can see that my time is set up here. If you go to this clock at the bottom right and you go to, I believe it was adjust time and date. And then right here, I checked the box. This was not checked. Set time and date automatically. And that forces it to sync with the time server. Now I did not see time server options like Windows may give you like nist.gov or Microsoft servers, but it synchronizes with some server that I, I it was right and it worked. And I also picked my time zone. I picked Detroit because I'm in that part of Michigan that's within an hour of Detroit. And that's my time zone. So it's Eastern time and my time automatically is now correct. So it may differ for you, but I recommend trying it out. Lots of cool little options under here. Spell check, uh, it's, it shows up under here. Formats for the numbers and the currency, all similar to what you get in the Windows time settings, time and date settings, I believe it's called in Windows. And uh, that's it for that. What else should we do? Let's go back to the settings manager that I was talking about before I mentioned backups. And you can get to it from down here because it's running. And if you go to the settings manager and you click on kernels, so what I did was right click on it and I went to kernels, it alerted me that a newer kernel is available. If you scroll down, it's going to show you what you are currently running and what you, what you have installed. You cannot uninstall that while you are running it. But what you can do is install a newer kernel if you wish to do this. And then when you reboot, you can go ahead and remove the old kernel if you wish. I recommend, again, doing that backup that I mentioned before you do this, because you could be in big trouble if you can't get back in your system. But again, many people don't use Arch as their main driver, but I think you could, honestly, my personal opinion. But I hear a lot of people say that you can't, you know, you shouldn't use Arch as a driver. It's more of a cutting edge kind of distribution, which is true, but... I, I think I think this Manjaro is just runs great. I, I, I've been having a lot of good luck with it. I haven't had any crashes or anything like that, and I'm really impressed. Now I've heard lots of comments about you know the Manjaro community. There's a lot of negative um, comments about you know maybe mean users, and I, I have not seen that as well. I went in the forums. People seem very friendly. Um, it tends to be I think bad press gets more press. Um, you know, the negativity tends to stand out like, oh my God, that happened because it's shocking. And that's, it's every Linux community. You have some users that are just toxic, but that happens. That's everywhere. That's the world, right? Um, people have been really friendly in the Manjaro community. And I love how the updates happen. Everything is very, very not well, very well packaged. It does seem a little overbranded to me at first, like, you know, Manjaro button here, man. but that's cool. It makes you feel, it makes me feel like they're going to be around, like the community is here to support you. I think of that as a good thing because you know you can customize it anyways to the way you like it. You can change the way your wallpaper looks. You don't have to keep any of this stuff. I think it's uh, very well done. And that that settings manager is something you want to you know, mess around with. It's, it's not intrusive. I'm not going to uninstall that. Another thing that they have branded here is the little notification area. You're going to notice this when you log in because you're going to see notifications. Now, this is something you might want to disable. I like it. It's kind of like an RSS feeder feed based on their news updates, but without the data 
consumption of an RSS feeder because I read about it in this is on GitHub, this app that is running here, and it's very transparent on what it's doing. It tells you everything. It's honest. So I'm keeping it. I think it's great. So I can click mark all as red and there it's not there to annoy me anymore. So the next thing, let's see, VLC media player already came installed. That's the first thing I usually install. And I looked under here under multimedia. There it is. That was great. Let's check for something else that I use on most Linux distributions, and that is Stacer, S-T-A-C-E-R. It's not there. So what would I do? I would go to the browser, I'll open up Firefox, and there's the GitHub page I was talking about. And you can see I was looking up our article, why is there hate for Manjaro? And I really couldn't find valid reasons. But anyways, let's uh, look up Stacer Linux. This is what I do if I can't find it in the repository. So let's do this, Linux uh, Arch. And there it is, it's in the Arch user repository. So what, what could we do in this case? Well, we could go here in the options under, this is on the, the uh, Add Remove Programs app or whatever you call it. Yeah, Add Remove Software. And I click the little hamburger menu and I go to Preferences. Okay, I'm gonna type in my password. And let's look right here. We got automatically download updates. Yeah, I like that. Um, official repositories, parallel downloads. I love to crank this up. Let's go to eight. Heck with it. And um, we're going to get get to this in a second. Advanced, remove, downgrade, third party. There it is. Arch user repository. So we see that it exists in the Arch user repository. We're going to turn that on and check for updates. Sure. I love updates. I don't care. I never find them annoying. Flatpak. Yes. This is a big one. This is what Linux Mint pushes, and I love it. Check for updates on those. Why not? Snap? Hell no. We don't like anything that has proprietary. But look at that. Right away. <laughs> it appears. So let's just do the first one. Um, Stacer binary. Actually, 1.1.0.3. Let's go for this one right here. Let's see if it works. And then you just accept the packages. A lot of people get annoyed by that, but that's just the behavior of this... Uh, Package manager it tells you the dependencies, and you got to click yes to continue. So this one's actually building it right now, and it did it already. That was fast. Let's type in Stacer, and again, I'm recording video at the same time. And here is one of my favorite apps because it looks really cool and modern. So you can see that out of my memory, it's using 2.5 gigabytes. But again, I'm recording video. And that's a little that's a little piggy. It's using quite a bit, um, but very cool. So let's go to here. You can see all the tasks in the memory, how much each one's using up, and there's simple screen recorder using up 400 megabytes almost. So yeah, that's expected. When you close it, it's going to warn you. Just click quit. So there, I got Stacer. So that's one of my favorite apps. Um, another thing I like to do is install Brave and get rid of Firefox. I know it seems weird, right? Firefox just isn't keeping up anymore, in my opinion. It gets a little sluggish. Um, I love I love Mozilla. I love um, Thunderbird. I think it's the greatest, but Firefox not my not my favorite. Let's go to Brave browser, and this is personal preference. You may use Firefox if you like, or Ice Weasel, or whatever the um, another spinoff or fork of Firefox is. Um, what am I thinking of? Brave browser, and we're going to go here. Brave Browser is a little weird to install um, if you do it the traditional way through their site where you got to copy and paste. Oh, actually, this is not the right site. Good old Google Ad Link right at the top. There we go. Download Brave. So if you go here, you're going to see that they give you options for Debian, Ubuntu, Mint, which is not this operating system, Fedora, Cent, OS, and Stream, OpenSUSE, and I do not see anything for Arch. So what do we do? Well, now that you can remember that we enabled those repositories, let's see if it shows up here now. And bingo, saves you a ton of trouble. So we're going to look at these versions. We got beta, we got 1.40, 1, 1.40, 113. So that appears to be the latest one. And you can see that I already installed it. So what do I do at this point? I look for Firefox. And here's my chance to remove it. I'm going to close Firefox. And we're going to go right here and click the little trash icon. It's Now it's marked for deletion. Click Apply. 
Goodbye Firefox. That took no time at all. Let's even try clicking the icon and see if it launches. Nothing. Okay, great. So we can remove the icon. Ready for privacy online. Set Brave as default. And I can skip the welcome tour. It does kind of nag you until you import bookmarks, which I'll do that later because that's going to take me some time. Um, so we remove Brave. What else do we do next? Let's see. Off the top of my head, touchpad. I recommend that you go click the little start button and type in the word touchpad, and then you'll find the option right here. I prefer to have natural scrolling, which is if you two finger swipe up on your touchpad, it will go down the page, like as if you're pushing a piece of paper up on a desk. To me, that makes sense. That's not enabled by default. So what I do is I check that and I click apply and then it works right out of the box. It works really well. And um, that's really all I can think of off the top of my head. I mean, it comes with all the apps you need, in my opinion. You got Office, which I don't really use Office, but it comes with an Office suite. It's not like all cluttered here. It's packaged under this one icon, only Office. Close this. And it's kind of got that Electron app feel where it's like a web browser window, but it works. Works fine. I don't even care to have Office, so I'm not picky about what they give me. And I go here. And if you look under Games, it's even got the Steam runtime. It's like, come on, that's, that's a pretty ballsy move. They put Steam runtime right there. I mean, that's I love it. So I use that. Um, graphics. Do we have GIMP? I don't remember installing it. It doesn't have GIMP. I would install that. It's the GNU image manipulation program. I totally recommend installing that. Uh, your browser, it's got QBitTorrent. That's great. It's got VLC, like I said earlier. Um, that's really all I need for now. I think I'm ready to get going and browsing the internet. Thanks for watching.